I don't know if I'm fucking live or not. Oh my gosh. If you see me out there in the ethernet, <laughs> let me know. I see a bunch of you in the chat. I don't even know where this is streaming to. Like it is my new studio is dialed in. It's beautiful. But the problem is it can't launch. Every time I try to launch, it's launching to a different location than where I need it to launch to. I pre-designate my cards so that way you guys can hang out beforehand and it's not going there. I'm beyond frustrated this morning. Let me see if I can find us. I know we are live on Rockfin. Hey, Rockfin, what's up? <laughs> Again, I am ready to freak the fuck out. <laughs> you have no idea. I spent 13 hours yesterday working on this and uh, and all the shows I'm doing this week. And then I don't launch. It's just like so frustrating. I almost just got up and walked away and said, fuck it. But I work too hard on this show for you guys. So we're going to do it one way or another. Apparently, you guys are seeing me on YouTube because I see YouTube coming into the stream. I don't know. I think it's launching on the live tab. It's not actually going to scheduled events. So whatever. Ah, ah. I guess I'll spend another 13 hours in this chair trying to figure it out. And it's my fault because I know what needs to be done, but I keep getting sidelined and I'm just going to go around it and fix it the way I know I need to fix it. Oz and I do totally different ways of scheduling when it comes to streaming. So I got to do it a different way. I have to put the stream key in. I can't just auto detect. It's not, it auto detects just the channel. It doesn't auto detect the scheduled events is what's going on. So ah, I don't know. You guys see me on Rumble? Am I up on Rumble? Let me see. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Shit. What a day. What a week. What a freaking week. You know what I did? I was so stupid. Okay. So I thought I'll move into a new studio and I'll throw an extra show into my schedule. And then my internet was out for 24 hours, which just this week is just kicking my ass. I got to get her stoned. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I haven't smoked because I didn't want to be mindless about trying to get into this studio. So I'm so fucking bummed. All the bells and whistles are in the studio. It looks amazing. And it just won't launch. Man. <laughs> it just will not go. I don't know what is up with that. But let's see. Are we live on Rockman? Or I mean on Rumble. I'm trying to find us on Rumble. See if we're live. My channels. No, not my channels. My content. My content. I hope everybody's having a better day than I am. And yes, I am live on Rumble. Hey, Rumble, go start hanging out over there. Yes, you are live. And I've got a hell of a show. I got a hell of a show. We're going to get there. Let me get the rock band up. Hey, rock band. Fred Edwards is hanging out over there with Zoxo Voxovix and Jim and Popeye and Aram. <laughs> I got to hang out with Aram for a second this morning. Of course, he's a helping Linda and Oz in the studio like they do every Tuesday. And we got a big, they've got a big surprise coming for you for Beauty and the Boomer. And I'm super excited for it. It's something we've been talking about doing for a long time. So you guys are going to love it. I'm so bummed. I'm so bummed. I was so ready to do the show with all of my sound effects and background effects. And now I'm back in this old clunky ass studio. It's like going from a Lamborghini to a fucking Pinto. <laughs> like, but anyways, we're just going to do the damn show. Let's do the damn show. There you are coming undone. I feel like I'm coming undone this week, but you guys are keeping me sane. And I love your words of encouragement in the chat. I see you guys like you can do it. <laughs> I think I have that somewhere on my slide deck or on my stream deck, but it doesn't matter because I don't have sound effects in this crappy ass old studio. Anyways, fair use. We are on YouTube. Hopefully today <laughs> it took us 25 minutes, but yeah, we're up on YouTube. Uh, these are just my criticisms comments comments and opinions don't come sue me but uh if you're interested in anything that i merely scratch the surface on please do your own research i promise you the truth is out there it's just probably not on google you might want to go to a different browser <laughs> or maybe tour who knows but the truth is out there and it will set you free what can i say okay so this camera needs to change because my other studio is a little different let's bring this in a little Ah, take a breath. <laughs> I'm just so pissed off right now. You have no idea. If you want to help me out, please help me out. <laughs> there we are. There is my cash app, my Venmo, my trailer bar, my buy me a coffee and my PayPal. I don't even know if the links are in the description box below because today is fucked. But you know, whatever, whatever. It's the end of the month. So you know, I'm starving, but that's okay. I can afford to lose, afford to lose a few more pounds. But I'll tell you what, the Biden diet is working fucking 
fucking great for me. When you can only afford to eat one meal a day and that day, that meal is fucking cheap ass carbs. And yes, carbohydrates, uh, pastas were invented for poor people to stop them from starving. Go look it up. <laughs> Anyways, here we are. Another day in clown fucking world. Yes, it's true. They got P. Diddy. Oh, blow up the bridge. Yeah, blow up the bridge. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yesterday was insane online. It was crazy. Like, you had all of the P. Diddy fucking rabbit holes. And I think this P. Diddy story may be bigger than the Epstein story. Epstein was an outlier, right? The public really didn't know who Epstein was. We knew who Epstein was because we had been talking about him for freaking years. But Diddy? Diddy's got his little Diddy claws into everybody. I mean, we're talking the Obamas. We're talking all of Hollywood. Like, he is buddy-buddy with that whole fucking group. We're always calling out the shitlib group, right? You guys know who they are. So I just kept falling in rabbit hole and falling in rabbit hole yesterday. I, you know, I'm working on an uncensored for tomorrow. We're doing an uncensored. You guys know that tomorrow uncensored and it is going to be a banger, man. I got some crazy shit on that deck. Like is Obama Satan? Uh, he might be, <laughs> is he the antichrist? Um, there's just, I got some crazy shit for tomorrow stuff we can't show on YouTube. And, uh, I started going down the Diddy rabbit hole and I was like, oh shit. This is going to be an Epstein level thing to where I'm just going to hundred percent have to do an entire show dedicated to it. There's that much stuff. I literally have content for the P Diddy case that is so uncensored and so bad. I don't, I can't even bring it to an uncensored show. Like it's that fucking bad guy It's like P Diddy ass in somebody. And, uh, yeah, it's bad. It's bad, bad anyway. So you have to join me tomorrow for uncensored. Hopefully we'll get the kinks worked out in the new studio and I will be in the new studio. Eventually one of these days, it's going to work itself out. Right. Poor Oz. I'm screaming at Oz in the back in the back room. Like what the fuck? I'm done. That's it. I'm just done. I'm not doing a show today. But I work too hard to bring these stories to you guys. You guys are kind enough to come hang out and wait for me to figure my shit out. So I'm going to do a show for you. Anyways, let's move on. And uh, we're going to talk about Diddy a little bit today. The Black Epstein. Yeah, the Black Epstein. We're going to talk about him, but a little bit further down the deck. We got other stuff that I think uh, is more important. And that is Julian Assange, right? A lot of uh, back and forth yesterday. Of course, of course, uh, we got the ruling from the UK uh, royal courts that but, hey, Julian can appeal. And everybody is saying, oh, this is a win. This is a win. The Guardian. Oh, my God. What a reprieve. No, this is not a fucking win. But this is exactly what we thought would happen. But when you start looking at the actual decision that the judge put out, hmm, it didn't really break in Assange's favor. This is just a go long stretch it out so that way we don't get him in the United States before this election is what this says. Anyway, so uh, this is Eagle Wings replying to Misty, Jimmy, and me. I was tagged in this. Did you know drone strikes, helicopter attacks stopped in Iraq after the collateral murder video came out? All eyes were on the U.S. The Iraq war ended. Julian Assange proved that truth could end war and bring peace. He stood by his words. Julian Assange proves that war can be ended with truth. What Julian and WikiLeaks publisher published in, ended the Iraq war. Assange's freedom matters for peace and for truth. Absolutely. And that is so true. Julian did prove that if you show the mirror to the public of what their freaking is being done in their names, it'll stop. Right. So, and then I got this from Misty this morning, and now this is a part of the actual uh, uh, decision from the judge. So Misty says, I'm boosting this because I feel like people really need to see it. This paragraph is fucking nuts. Okay, so this is paragraph 210 from the official ruling, the decision that was handed down. So this is from the judge. The judge did not reject the evidence that the application had... Um, adduced a, a similar effect as untrue or the original alliance by some margins serious enough to bar extradition. If the alleged misconduct was in any way connected to the extradition proceedings, 
The judge's critical f findings, however, is that there was nothing to show the conduct in relation to the embassy was connected to the extradition uh, proceedings. So what does that mean? That means, well, we don't care that the CIA tried to kill him multiple times and it doesn't have anything to do with him being extradited. How the fuck does it not have anything to do with him being extradited? Oh my God. The new evidence does not change that. On the face of the allegations, which is that they tried to kill him and they spied on him, um, on the evidence before the judge and the fresh evidence, I don't know what that means, the con compilation of extreme measures against the applicant, whether poisoning, for example, or renderation, was a response to the fear that the application might flee to Russia. Okay. Uh, the short answer to this is, is that the rationale for such conduct is to remove removed if the applicant is extradited. Extradition will result in him being lawfully in custody of the United States authority. And the reason if they can be, call it that the renation of kidnapping and assassination that falls away. So they're saying, well, he can't be kidnapped or killed because he'll be in U.S. custody. And it doesn't really matter what the CIA was doing because it doesn't have anything to do with uh, the extradition. Now, Caitlin Johnstone just dropped an amazing email. If you're not signed up for her email list, you should be because she does some amazing fucking work. And uh, I just read it. it. She does an amazing breakdown of this. And uh, she, yeah, she just tells you how it is. There's Assange's address. Uh, please write him. He's still being tortured in Belmarsh. This is a slow strangulation of Julian Assange is what it is. They're slowly just killing him out, right? That's what they got to do. Uh, I brought you a little video on it, too. Well, there you have it. Stella Assange, Julian Assange's wife, tearfully explaining to the press that can be bothered, not that it's covered in British media particularly, Never. that somehow Britain known for torture, known for uh, mass killing, exposed by Julian Assange, is seeking assurances from the United States, known for mass murder and torture and execution yeah, only we last week, asking them to give assurances they won't treat him badly, while the slow motion execution of Julian Assange occurs in London, approaching five years incarceration for never having committed any crime, only having committed the act of revealing the war crimes of NATO nations. This uh, judgment is, uh, is appalling. Three weeks for yet more arguments to be made by the Biden administration, even though we know U.S. authorities planned Julian Assange's assassination. We know that the former boss of the CIA, Mike Pompeo, disgraced, said, kill him. We know uh, Hillary Clinton wanted to drone bomb him all for doing the job of journalism. Yep. This is uh, another indictment, not only of the British court system, the United States Biden administration, but uh, the indictment of many of Julian Assange's uh, colleagues, the journalists around the world, who do nothing to uh, help and save the life of the greatest journalist of our time. Hair, hair. Hear, hear. I freaking totally agree. And to say, to say that, oh, come on. Oh, he's not in any danger. No, he wouldn't be in any danger. So what they're saying is, well, you got to give us a couple of assurances. You have to assure us that you're not going to kill him for one. And you got to let, uh, you got to tell us that he's going to have a right to free speech while he's there. Do you really think the, the U.S. is like, oh, yeah, you can say whatever he wants inside that solitary cell and fucking, you know, whatever uh, prison they're going to shove him in. Yeah, yeah, he's got free speech. He, he can't talk to anybody, but he can say whatever he wants. That's exactly what they're going to say. And they're going to say, oh, no, we won't kill him. Even though we hear they're trying to, right? That they're trying to put that on the table. So, so gross. Stella tweeted out this picture yesterday and I just thought it was so moving. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. Taking a break between interviews with Embassy Cat. Aww. Look at how little Embassy Cat was like five, six years ago, right? Because he got he got Embassy Cat a uh, little while before he got pulled out of the embassy. So Embassy Cat's getting big and old. Daddy needs to come home. Embassy Cat's so pretty, though. Isn't that a pretty baby?
you know, Stella and that cat probably have a very close relationship. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, okay, let's talk about the bridge. I'm <laughs> so over it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Attack or accident? Which one? Which one? I mean, isn't it a quinky dink that uh, most of the cargo that's coming through the east is coming through that waterway? It's one of our main corridors for, you know, so our supply chain. Just seems a little quinky dinky to me. And um, I brought you guys along, Shoreman, who says this is not fucking possible. But let's take a look at it in the daylight hours. We did get some daylight video footage yesterday. Now, I do believe that they called off. They called off the search for any survivors less than 24 hours in, but it is water, right? Anybody hanging out probably gone by now. So last night they called off the search for any survivors. And uh, I don't know if we've actually got a full count, right, of how many went into the drink with this. But uh, let's check it out, see what it looks like in the daylight. Not a very long video, but yeah, there's the bridge. Oh, we're going to do this, are we? Oh, okay. Like, my internet's crapping out now. Just what I needed. Oh, come on. Seriously? Okay. Uh, now I'm having internet issues. So <laughs> what? Six bridge workers went down with the bridge, Popeye says. Yeah, there was construction workers on the bridge, right? That's terrible. That's terrible. It's one thing to be trapped in your car and going into the drink. It's another to free fall from the top of a bridge. That's scary. Um, yeah, I, I hopefully my internet doesn't go out. If it does, I'm just going to be done because <laughs> I've had enough issues today. So, uh, you know, uh, Steve Bannon, he's got that uh, news channel program called, it's, what is it called? The War Room or some shit. He fucking wishes. He fucking wishes. Anyways, uh he had Laura Logan on, and this is what she had to say about it. Now, there's a lot on the far right who are saying this was intentional. They're trying to say that there was structural detonations on that bridge. And I didn't bring the video because I don't think there was. But if you go back and you look at the video, especially if you're on the front side, so if the boat is coming this way, you're on the other side of the harbor looking at it because we've seen videos from every angles. You literally see... But is that the cable snapping? It looks like it is the uh, sparks from the cable snapping, right? So there's a lot of conspiracy theories already out there about this. And I'm just going to bring them to you because I don't really have an opinion either way. I don't trust my government. I don't trust anything that they tell me. So I'll just sit back and watch everything that comes in. And, you know, so this is what they had to say. So we need an investigation. What, what is your investigation telling you? Well, I have a better question for you, Steve. Why are you coming to the mic telling the country that it's not terrorism when your own intelligence uh, agencies are telling you it is? And I know they are because I didn't make this up. These are not my words, right? I'm talking to people who are on the inside, some who are on active duty, some who are retired, and everyone literally from critical infrastructure in Department of Homeland Security to the intelligence agencies, they know there's no other, it, it's, there, this is a cyber attack on a critical infrastructure corridor for the United States. This is, you know, for those people who think this is just a river, this is in Baltimore, what does this matter? You don't know anything about what you're talking about. This, the I-94 corridor on the eastern seaboard is literally what connects the north and south. And when I talk about hazardous materials, right, this is a brilliant, well-planned strategic attack on one of the most important supply chains in the United States of America. The only other one is in the western side in California. That's the only one that's busier. And what you have does, you, you now have shut it down. And when I talk about hazardous materials, what are we talking about here? This is refined fuels, right? This is propane gas. This is diesel. This is fuel. This is flammable materials. This is oversized loads, nitrogen, chemicals. Everything that you need for your economy to move has literally just been shut down for four to five years. And, and how did they do it? They knew 
that they had to target one of two main anchor points on that bridge. There are two load-bearing pylons that any structural engineer can identify that are on the end of each side of the bridge. These are the ones that are thicker and stronger than anything else on that bridge. And when you hit one of those pylons, when you take that out, the reason you see so much of that bridge collapse instantly is you just brought 50% of the span of that bridge coming crumbling down. And what you don't see beneath the surface of the water, Steve, is absolutely catastrophic. It is a structural nightmare and a legit. Okay, so we've heard enough from the war room. But what do you guys think? Do you think? Do you, I mean, there's conspiracies for everything that happens, right? There are false flags, conspiracies, whatever. But it does seem kind of suspicious that, uh, yeah, this knocks out a lot of our supply chain. We're all going to fill it, right? So where is the transportation commissioner at? Oh, there he is. He's touring the, the accident site. Oh, Pete. Have a good time, Pete. So we did have a video of Pete. I lost it yesterday. I'm literally processing hundreds of videos this week. And it was one of those ones that just got lost. But he didn't say anything worth a goddamn. So it wasn't, I was like, oh, I'm not even gonna go back and look for it. Fuck that guy. Because he is just a figurehead. He's a puppet figurehead, just like they always are, right? What did Pete Buttigieg know about fucking transportation two, three years ago when he got fucking thrown in here? Not a goddamn thing. He went to the School of the Americas. And remember, Cornell used to stuff dollar bills down his diaper when he hung out with his daddy. So, yeah, I don't think he knows much about um, transportation. And, you know, we see all these infrastructure issues all over the fucking country. But eh, they don't ever wheel Pete out unless it's really bad. And when they do, he only has a few things to say that are scripted, right? <laughs> oh, ship crashes into bridges all the time. That was Pete. Yeah, Pete said that, didn't he, Popeye? Popeye, yeah. Ships crash into bridges all the time. This isn't unusual. Uh, yeah, bullshit. Bullshit. Wait till you see this uh, video I got coming up. Uh, but first, let's talk about the mayor. Did you guys see the exactly what I'm thinking, Shanda? Supply chain already fucked up. Exactly. This makes it worse. You just heard this is going to shut down the movement of a lot of uh, chemicals and uh, base supply things that we use for fucking years, years. But no, this wasn't intentional. This was just a tragic accident. Which they say, uh, no, it's not possible. Now, my great grandpa or my, my grandpa was um, a longshoreman. And so I listened to the longshoremen and what they're fucking saying. And I brought you guys a longshoreman. But first, I want to talk about the Baltimore mayor. Did you guys see this? What the fuck? Look at how young he is. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable attraction. Uh, what are you doing, Internet? Uh, we have to, uh, first and foremost, pray for all of those who are impacted. Uh, those is that a Letterman's jacket? Uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together. Did they get this uh, guy out of high state, school? Local, to make sure that we... I, I, okay, so I, he just said, you know, we got to pray for everybody, whatever. And we're going to do what we can. But my whole, I was like, that's Baltimore's mayor. Have you ever been to Baltimore? Like, what? Okay, where are they getting these guys? I mean, he's got a leather Letterman's jacket on. Ugh. My systems are just popping out left and right today. Must be the internet. I don't know. Anyways, I was just, I know they say black don't crack, but God damn, that's young. <laughs> you can't tell me that that guy's 40 years old. I'm not going to buy it. And, uh, you know, uh, hey, did you guys see that comrade Misty Putin was hanging out yesterday uh, with Nick on RBN? Oh, my God. It was a great interview. They had me laughing the whole fucking show. Like, if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth the rewatch because it was some funny stuff for sure. And, uh, yeah, this Baltimore mayor. Okay, Baltimore. Okay. <laughs> you do you. You do you. I will tell you, um, I've been to Baltimore once. Amber and I flew into Baltimore and we drove into D.C. And the only thing I took away from Baltimore was, holy fuck, why can't they clean the sides of their roads? Is that an East Coast thing? I mean, we we get crews, like we get... Um, People will volunteer and like buy a piece of the highway and then you'll see a sign that says this part of the highway is cleaned by blah, blah, blah. 
but they seem to not do that on the East Coast. Like, I have never seen so much fucking garbage on the sides of the roads, hanging out of trees. Like, you couldn't even see grass. And it was that way from Baltimore all the way into fucking D.C. Miles and miles and miles. Just like, why can't anybody come clean this shit up? You guys got prisoners. I know you do. We're a private prison state. You can't put them out there. We have chain gangs that'll come clean up too. Like, I was shocked. I was shocked at how much garbage was on the side of the um, turnpikes or whatever you call them in uh, on the East Coast. We don't have that shit on the West Coast. The West Coast is just a major parking lot. So <laughs> I don't know if the East Coast, uh, is it any better with turnpikes? Maybe it is. Anyways, let's hear from this Coast Guard veteran because I, you know, you want to know what's going on? Go to the people who fucking know. This is a engineer, former Coast Guard veteran. Let me be that dude, the retired Coasty to tell you, ain't no way, boy, ain't no way that no tanker ship is going to crash into no bridge at night by mistake. Question to all my Coasties out there, where the pilot boat at and where the tugboats at? And where's the horn? Yeah, where the was warning, the horn? Mm -hmm. The crash warning. Before it hits. I ain't hear no warning. Yeah. I ain't hear no mm -mm, nothing. I'ma leave that with y'all. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. And it's a couple days after that Russia attack. Don't let that go over your head, my people. Okay, he's got an excellent point. Why did we not hear a horn? Every ship captain who crashes into something is going to warn people his boat's about to freaking hit. Why did he not lay on that fucking horn as he knew he was going to hit? Now, we know they threw the anchor, right? They threw the anchor to try to slow them down. They were doing everything they could possibly to slow themselves down. But uh, yeah, and then we're hearing that Boats don't go through that waterway without tugs, let alone at 1.30 in the fucking morning. So what gives? What gives? We're hearing from Coasties that no, no. Oh, I know there's no power. I know the power went out. And I don't know if that's a uh, hack. It could very well have been a hack, you know. But my question is, why was that ship in that waterway without tugs? Because everybody is saying that pilot boat and tugboats cut into quarterly profits, says Cobra Commander. Also, trained pilots cut into quarterly profits. Almost all accidents are human error. Well, yeah, that's true, right? Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're hearing from a lot of people that ships don't normally go through there without tugs. So why the hell was that ship in there without a tug? Good question. I mean, these are all good questions. Where was the horn? Where was the horn? I don't know. You know, it's just like anything else. We'll never get told the truth. We'll never know the truth. We can speculate and we'll get called conspiracy theorists and, you know, like 9-11. I mean, we get uh, so many instances of the same shit. So we can point out all the things. It won't matter. Here's a couple of things more to point out. So for those of you who don't know, the Francis Scott Key Bridge is the same bridge event that took place in the Netflix movie, Leave the World Behind. Oh, my gosh. Soft disclosure. The production company, which was owned by the Obamas. Isn't that crazy? Remember that movie, Leave the World Behind, that came out like three months ago and warned us of weird shit like this? Who benefits, Jilly says. Who benefits is always the best question. Follow the money and who benefits, right? Uh, you see that bridge, Nick? It's one of them. Uh, what did he... What did he call it? Metaphoric uh, or uh, metaphor? It's like uh, a Shabbat's guess and our union. The whole working class is in the, this country. It's going to last forever just like we did. Yeah, that's very fitting. Of course, that was from The Wire. <laughs> People are saying that was kind of predictive. Like when the the uh, Francis, Key Con or Francis Scott Key Bridge falls, America has fallen. Is that the symbolism in it? I, I guess I am. But how crazy that the Obamas are uh, predicting this shit, right? Remember the movie? 
Remember? Come on. We all watched the movie just a couple months ago. We were all talking about it. If you haven't watched it, it is on Netflix. It is probably the stupidest fucking movie I've ever seen. The ending is a joke. And all it is is soft disclosure and, and predictive programming. <laughs> I swear to God, right? Uh, I think we got a couple more on this. So container ships do not lose their ability to steer in an event of a power loss. Modern vessels have multiple backup systems for steering, ensuring control even during a power outage. Now, that would make sense to me. I mean, I've sailed a good bit. I've been on the water a good bit in my life in sailboats. And even when your motor is out, you still have the ability to turn the keel and maneuver. So that would make sense to me. I mean, I am not a uh, big ship expert, but <laughs> I live in a town where they port. So, you know, it's just like sleeping at a Holiday Inn. Biden tells of train journey. <laughs> but this is funny. Biden tells of a train's journey over the collapsed Baltimore Bridge that never had tracks. U.S. president makes the latest gaffe in an address to the country as he promises to rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So fucking Biden... But in his head, did a train fall in the water, too? Is that what that was? What was that? I didn't listen to the speech, but I could see Biden saying that. Like, oh, and the train was going over and it fell in. There was no train tracks on that bridge, apparently. So Biden being Biden, just making shit up in his head like he always does. Now, I brought you a clip from a, an actual friend of mine. <laughs> and some of you are going to be like, what? This is your friend? Yes, I have been friends with George Webb for many for many years. I, I would say like eight or nine years now. So George Webb investigates, says Gladio C coming from Russia and the U.S. Is Victoria Nuland running it for the CIA? Let's hear what he has to say. OK, hello, everybody. George Webb. And of course, the big question. Oh, OK. God, my Internet seems to want to be crap today, guys. It is now with this crocus massacre. Will this throw us into sort of a gladio sea? Um, the idea being uh, you take these armies, stay behind armies, civilian targets, you operate on civilian targets, bombings, uh, cyber hackings, bridge explosions, all this kind of sabotage work. Uh, and you get these proxies from the old gladio B, which was in all the stands. And then going all the way back to after World War II, the, Stay Behind RV program and the sabotage program was called just regular Gladio in Italy and then all through Eastern Europe. Is this Gladio C? Is it Victoria Newland when she left the State Department now? Is she at uh, CIA again running this Gladio C? I think it is. Budinov supposedly was the guy who he brought in this uh, shish, shish kebab guy who was the head ISIS guy. How do you get, how does shish kebab get into? How does shish kebab get into Ukraine during the middle of a war? The leader of ISIS. I'm not saying he was one of the four pictured in the shootings. I'm just saying, how does shish kebab get in, right, to Ukraine? He got in because Budinov brought him in. They're using these proxies from the old Gladio B. Uh, Sibel Edmonds wrote about it. And now they're vectoring them into Russia. And this is the step up. And what's going to happen? You're going to see similar things happening in the United States. There's going to be lockdowns now in the United States because now they're supposedly the Russians. Ever Paul Wellen goes and hires all the Russians, all the fake Russians, to create the false narratives for the DNC. That's coming. You know that's coming. Attacking bridges and so forth, blaming it on the Russians, and then locking down. What, what do lockdowns bring? Ballots, right? And, of course, we have H5N1. We have Marion Koopman's uh, the Erasmus lab, the gain-of-function lab, with all those bioweapons. Okay, so here's the thing about George. I love George, and I absolutely believe George believes what he's telling everybody, right? He does. And he's got good information sprinkled in and amongst there, just like any of them. You can watch Steve Bannon and get some information out of him, too. You know, that's why I say watch everybody, everybody, and take away from it the things that you need and build your own conspiracy at the end of the day. I don't know. Does he have a point about the uh, Gladio C? Yeah, he absolutely fucking Luli does. Do you think these guys just hung up their hat years ago and said, no, we're not doing this anymore? Fuck no. And these are good questions. How did those guys get into the Ukraine?
they just walk in. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. So meanwhile, uh, while, while in Israel, President Biden recalls the time that he was found in a basket and raised by Hebrews. Yeah, they called him Moses. Anyways, hello, government. I would like to unsub. <laughs> I would like to unsubscribe from this government. Please, please, you know, try to escape America as a poor person. Go ahead. Do it. I'll wait because <laughs> you ain't getting the fuck out. You ain't getting out. You need hundreds of dollars for a fucking passport. Uh, yeah, no, you got to jump through all their little hoops and then try to get into another country, depending on what country you're going to. Hey, you don't have any money. We don't want your likes here. Right. Oh, anyways, the, the wall is to build to keep you in, not keep you out. Uh, let's see. Lindsey Graham. Oh, fuck this guy. I'm here with Israel's elected leader, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We have Israel's back. Well, of course you do. I'm happy to welcome a good friend of mine and a great friend of Israel, <clears throat> Senator Lindsey Graham. Lindsey, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you for your consistent support at all times and especially in these trying times. Thank you. Uh, well, this is my fifth visit, I think, since October the 7th. Mm -hmm. I'm here for a reason to show support because you're a you, kiss ass, my good friend, the and elected money leader from of the state of Israel. I have known you for almost 30 years now. I met you through our good friend John McCain. Oh, well, that's to something to be bragging about. I have your back and your country's back. Ah, that is so gross. So gross. I met you back there with John McCain. Yeah, um, Lindsey Graham, go the fuck away. Who keeps reelecting these people? I'm going to tell you. APEC, that's who keeps reelecting these people. It's not us, the people that vote for these guys, him and the Mitch McConnells and, you know, all of them. We don't vote for these guys. APEC does. APEC votes for them. Uh, people living paycheck to paycheck. Landlords living month to month. Banks and corporations living bailout to bailout. The U.S. government living war to war. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the breakdown of our reality. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes there's a stop at McDonald's in there. But uh, for the most part, that's what it is. It's just uh, war, war, war. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. I told you I had another shmooly. I warned you guys yesterday I had two shmoolies. Who would let this lunatic near their children? And if shmooly's out there in the chat, no selling dildos in the chat this morning, please. He said, God, from the time I was a child, I was born with, I was given payas, I was taught to Shema, and I was taught to believe in you as God. Now, for the past two years in the ghetto, you have done everything in your power to prove to me that you do not exist. What does this guy know Make about me into an atheist. Or that even if you don't exist, that you're cruel, that you're wicked, that you're unloving. You're cruel that you're and wicked. But I want you to know that I will die the way I was born, a believing Jew. That there is no power in the universe, including you, God, creator of heaven and earth. He who fills he the infinite expanse of, of space. I, as a Jew, am stronger than you. My name is Israel. He who wrestles with God and is victorious. I will die that with my it, faith face intact. Like kids. There is nothing you can do. No Hitler, no Gestapo, no SS that can be sent against me. That will ever, and no Hamas. And no Hamas. That will ever cause me to question my faith in you. Oh, my gosh, that's just so gross. You know, and the fact that he's around so many little kids. You see him yesterday in that video I brought yesterday. There's all these little kids around. And those little kids, you, they know. Kids know. They have an inherent sense of them of good and bad. It's like being able to see somebody's aura from a little while away, right? It's like animals. You know, dog knows if you're good or bad, right? Those little kids, you see it on them. You see it. They see him as a bad guy and they're pulling away from him as he's touching and laughing and, and asking him stupid shit, right? Uh, yeah. Always trust the kids and the dogs. They know who good people are. And uh, yeah, they say this guy's a bad dude. Anyways, still trying to work out why ISIS didn't, doesn't attack Israel. Yeah, I'm still trying to work that out. I wonder why. Why is that? Jax Page is in the house. Good to see you, Jax. How's it going? Shmuley sounded legitly drunk in that clip. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. That's what I'm saying. He sounded drunk and he sounded drunk in the clip I brought yesterday, too. He uh, I might have a little bit of a problem, if you know what I mean. Anyways, I brought you guys a fee says. Let's see what fee says. Uh, OK, so Nico tweeted out just to be clear, these are the same Israelis trying to distract from the genocide they're committing in Palestine by saying, 
how come you guys don't care about what's happening in the Congo, right? Yeah, they keep saying, but the Congo, look over here. So Fee says, but they're more the but they are the most unfortunate, poor, racially profiled, mistreated, oppressed ethnic group. Don't be anti-Semitic and never forget to condemn Hamas, right? Okay, let's hear. What's your name? What's your name? Shumu. What's your name? Who's your name? What's your name? Ang ang ah. What's your name? Ngak ngak. What's your name? Ngan topo. What's your name? Oh man. What's your name? Ningan ngak ang ang ah. What's your name? Ungne ungne na. What's your name? Ungne wa wombo non te. Ang kak koko. Ang kak koko koko. My name is Abu Vovro, and it's a very good movie or science. What's your name, my man? I'm Tan Kupu. And what about you? I'm Tan. 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 I'm Yeah, they were mocking them, making fun of them. What's your name? <laughs> Can we line the Israelis up and make fun of their names? I mean, it's only fair, right? And yeah, they both have an excellent point. Great point uh, from both Nico and uh, Fiorella as well. Uh, congratulations, Nico. You see Nico's new baby. Oh, what a cutie baby. Oh, my gosh. All that hair. So cute. So cute. So that is... Uh, of course, the channel Free Palestine, Free Gaza. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? American Patriots pick one. Register APAC as a foreign agent or register APAC as a foreign terrorist organization. Go ahead. Pick one. Pick one. Are they a foreign agent or are they a foreign terrorist organization? I'll wait. Anyways, a uh, senator for 36 years, vice president for eight years, blames Trump for America's problems. Yeah, that is the clown show. That is the Biden administration. Of course, you know, the Democrats, that's their favorite thing. Just before we went live, I keep getting these emails from the LD level chair of my local Democrats and uh, they're begging <laughs> begging for fucking delegates like i seen an email every every uh, week this 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 last month and now they're like come on you've only got till the blah 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 to get signed up and we need 70 more <laughs> like nobody wants to be a fucking delegate for these asshats and i have a feeling that the local delegates that have signed up are probably running uncommitted i mean i have a lo lot of shit libs in my area but i just found it hilarious so i kind of thumbed through who they were endorsing for this election. It's the likes of Maria Cantwell and, you know, uh, Hillary Franz, like uh, classic dim style. And even at the local level, the people that I know in my community that were inside the Democrats, it's the worst among them that got elected for like state chair, uh, committee chair and shit like typical Typical, typical Democrats at the end of the day. Nothing's going to change, but I think it's funny. I think that uh, the community is starting to show them that they don't want to play with their their make-believe pageantry of the Democratic Party. Because that's all it is. It's pageantry, right? You pay. if So if I decided I wanted to be a delegate today, like I had for Bernie, for say for Biden, I would go in and I would sign at my, at my local level, at my precinct level, which is easy to get, you know, because they got to pick so many. And then they'll send them to the county level and the county will pick like, I don't know, I think it was 18 and, and then from there, they go to the state level. But here's the thing. When you get to the county and state level, you have to start paying to play in their little pageant. So if you go to the state level, if you want to go uh, rub elbows with, you know, Patty Murray and uh, Derek Kilmer and Rick Larson, you can do that for about $650. I think it was $650 for the VIP breakfast. And uh, yeah, so it's all about making money. All that pageantry that they do to collect, to select their delegates, it's just to raise money for the Democratic Party at the end of the day. 
at the end of the day. And they don't want any pushback inside of that Democratic convention. I mean, we were probably the the, the worst that the Democrats have ever seen under Bernie, right? Because we were in there talking about issues like Palestine. We were tabling for issues like Medicare for all and for a free Palestine and all the things they fucking hate to talk about. We were there pushing down their fucking throats. Now, they're not going to get that kind of pushback this time around right? They didn't get it in 2020 because we were all locked down and uh, they fucking shut us down on the Zoom. They just fucking mute us. So we had no say. Oh, and they're still doing the fucking Zoom meetings. They're selecting delegates via Zoom. And if you want to go to the state convention, it's going to be held in Bellevue, but you don't need to spend all that money. You can just call in on the Zoom and we'll just fucking mute you and ignore you. But hey, you got to participate in democracy because we gave you the fucking link. That is what the Democratic Party is. That I, I guess that email triggered me this morning. What can I say? So yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> I'll quit ranting. I'll let I'll let Brianna Joy Gray uh, burn Mariana Williamson down because I got to tell you, the third party candidates they ain't fucking much better. So let's see, free clip of today. Oh well, isn't that awful nice of you, Brie? Give us a free clip. Anyway, she says, "This is my honest belief. I'm at this point, and I'm." And because I'm where I'm in my campaign. Okay, so this is Marianne Williamson saying this. There are people who, no matter what I say on this or as well as anything else, like you said before, I am not changing my basic beliefs. And I believe that, uh, as I said before, the United States should have equal and equal uh, equality, robust commitment to safety and security uh, of security and the sovereignty of both peoples. So she's not saying anything, basically. But here, let's listen to what. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? To whatever extent, there are unjust, undemocratic laws towards anyone in Israel. And they are not across the board, as is pictured by some. That needs to be changed. But to me, that does not necessitate uh, the destruction of the state of Israel. But do you as see what I'm saying here? There's a the difference have, between... Yeah. There could be a state of Israel that was inclusive. This is like the one state solution, right? There could be a state of Israel that's inclusive of the, what, 5 million people or so that live in the West Bank in the Gaza Strip, where they have equal rights as all Jewish and Arab um, Israelis. The occupation of the West Bank is illegal. The occupation of the West Bank did not exist before 1967. 1968 when all those changes occurred because of the war so you could still have an israeli state and dismantle the occupation and also those settlements which are illegal that does not so would that mean would you endorse the full right of return of all the palestinians that would probably mean th that needs to be completely this is, has to be a negotiation for a two-state solution never gonna happen. there has to be a negotiation for a two-state solution i would ask you when you talk about a one-state solution who who is going to govern that one state? What is going to be the um the what is going to be the um you know the governance of this one state? And if these people it's are going to be one state and it's going to be killing each other the way they are now, not even the majority of them living in the same place. To me, the idea of a one state solution is a setup for a bloody civil war such as we have never seen. So So there's a couple there's a couple of things built in there, you know, Marianne. I mean, part of the problem is I think the the characterization of killing each other um, as though there haven't been enormous asymmetries long before October 7th of who is dying. You right? know what? I, 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 I'm not going there. I, I have said for years, I mean for years, I have been decrying, and this is well on record. For years, I've decried the, the settlements. For years, I have decried uh, the occupation. So for years, I had to cry the siege for years, and I'm on record. And I also have called for a ceasefire. I get credit Not only for that. From the day, I've been saying the day it. it began, but even before. But this is my honest belief. I'm at this point, and because I'm where I am in the campaign, there are people who, no matter what I say, and on this, as well as everything else, like you said before, I'm not changing my basic beliefs. And I'm not going, I believe that, as I said before, that the United States should have equal uh, and equally robust commitment to the safety and the security and the sovereignty of both peoples. And every, and I've written, if somebody goes to Marianne2024.com, 
I have a whole section there on Israel and Palestine. Oh, I'm so over it. I, I could care less where you, what you have, where you have it. Is it just me or is her voice condescending? Just, I don't, it's that talk down to you northerner thing that she does. Uh, it reminds me of the Kennedy compound or some shit. Like, I just like, ew, ew, stay away. Anyways, why is she running? Why? Why is she even in the race? Oh, to sell more books. That's right. She's going to sell more books. Okay, we finally made it to the P. Diddy section. And there's so much. Like I said earlier. Oh, my eye is twitching. Um, we're, I'm going to have to do a deep dive for you all. Like I did with Epstein. Like I've done. I think I did a three-part thing on Epstein in the very beginning. I mean, before anybody was really, really on the Epstein. Uh, we were, I was talking about it. But yeah. And I've told you guys about Diddy. I've been telling you guys. Don't. Uh, I brought the Cat Williams clip when he, you know, said, don't let Diddy get your booty hole. Like, we've known this about him. And this is why I question Russell Brand. In my mind, I've, I made the connection finally. Russell Brand was in the movie Get Him to the Greek. Now, Get Him to the Greek was a pretty real uh, depiction of how Diddy rolls. And, and a lot of people fucking knew that. So my thing when Russell really became prevalent in our independent media space, I was like, yeah, but OK, so is he in this space because because he was with those people and he knows what he knows? Or is he a fucking plant? Like, those are my questions. That's my question anyways. Well, and because I know the P. Diddy stuff like I do, and I know Russell Brand hung out with P. Diddy, but a lot of people hung out with P. Diddy. That whole entire Oprah, Bruce Springsteen, Obama, uh, you know, that whole group, they all hang out together with P. Diddy. Now, they all platformed him. He was on Jimmy Kimball. How many times was Diddy on Jimmy Kimball? I mean, Ellen. He was on Ellen. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about sicko Ellen, right? So I have to do a deep dive because literally yesterday I'm trying to write you guys this show and I fell down Diddy hole after Diddy hole after Diddy hole. And they're not a pleasant place. I literally came across stuff that is so revolting. And, I mean, evidence that... <clears throat> Okay, you can't prove where it came from or who is on it, uh, audio evidence, but it sounds pretty fucking incriminating. And it's so bad that I can't even bring it to you guys. That's the stuff we're coming across. I think <clears throat> P. Diddy is going to make Epstein look like nothing, really, because P. Diddy is closer connected and he's in the public eye. Epstein wasn't in the public eye, right? He's closer connected to Hollywood and a lot of these uh, these politicians, too. So, OK, let's start. I've got a whole like, I don't know, five or six slides. So we'll get started. OK, so Puff Daddy. Oh, the memes a bit off the hook, by the way. There's tons of memes in here. So Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, pedophile. <laughs> yeah, that's it. OK, so where did this all start from? I think this started with the uh, death of Kim Porter, but that's just my own opinion. You won't see others really saying that, but I think he had something to do with that. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of fallout. There's a lot of people close to him, like Jay-Z and Beyonce, that uh, have links to a lot of this shit. Uh, so it started with Cassie. Cassie's a performing artist. I, I want to say she's like R&B, right? Because this is what he does. He mentors all of these up and coming artists, right? Whether it be hip hop or whether it be R&B. But Diddy was very close with Cl Clive Owens too. And when you know about Clive Owens, you know. I mean, everything that we know about Epstein and his honeypot and then uh, Harvey Weinstein and the sex, um, the casting couch, put those together and you got P. Diddy, basically is what I see here. So it started with Cassie. Cassie filed lawsuits. Uh, he makes everybody sign an NDA. So that's why it's so hard that a lot of people haven't came forward. And, you know, that's the problem with the Dan Snyder issue, too. Dan Snyder bought everybody off and, and Harvey Weinstein did, too. So at, at the end of the day, it came down to a lawsuit from Cassie and she had some goods. She did her shit. Like, if you ever get caught in something like this, man, you better start collecting evidence because that's the only thing that's going to save your ass is if you can prove it, right? And I think she could prove it because think about it. Diddy is close with the Democratic Party. A lot of the Democratic Party operatives. Uh, why? We all know why. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's the same Epstein thing. But uh, she must have had some shit to get the um, Homeland Security on him. I mean, they had to prove what the hell was going on. So my question is, who 
was above Diddy. Because these guys always answer to everybody, right? That's the way the Illuminati works. It's a fucking pyramid. So somebody above Diddy pulled the trigger and sacrificed him, just like what we saw with Epstein, right? They protected Epstein for uh, 15 fucking years. And then finally, at some point, they go, nope, he, you know. He's, he's done. And they did that with Diddy because they all know these are open secrets. Everybody knows like everybody in independent media, like the, the gossipy, you know, pop culture. We all know this stuff. We've known about Diddy for a long, long time, just like R. Kelly. Oh, and Diddy and R. Kelly were good friends, right? This is what they do. They go after and and Diddy likes young boys, right? And I've been telling you about the Justin Bieber uh, aspect, right? And the Usher connection. Yeah, there's so much. And uh, I think there's going to be collateral damage that falls out from this. Unless the Democratic Party goes in there and quells the, uh, you know, the Homeland Security and whatever evidence they've got to take him to court. Uh, I could see that happening. Them kind of just kind of question it, throwing a blanket over the fire, right? So that way they could save uh, Jay-Z. That way they can save all of these people who had connections with uh, Diddy. That's what they did with Epstein, for sure. Okay, let's get started with the first video. I'm working with him heavily to working with P. Diddy. He seems quite scared. Oh, come on, internet. Why are you being so stupid today? Let me see. Yeah. Well, I always worked with... Uh, I'm scared. Hey, baby, I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. Cassie has sued music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, accusing him of filming Cassie in ritualistic, ritualistic blank acts. Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes. I'm going to leave them with somebody to watch them. Not a babysitter. Um, I like to call, call it a den mother. The scared look in her eyes, the red light, the turning, the angle of the camera. And the men would give gifts to each other and have with each other. Puff and Tupac was like a couple. If you think that she was just hiring those male pro for herself, nah. There was a party at Clyde Davis's house, Clyde Davis. and that's where the story began. Yeah, my bad. It was Clive Davis. I don't know why I was thinking Clive Owen. Oh, because I just watched a Clive Owen movie yesterday or the day before. That's why. Ah, see the brain, how it misfires. Well, Pop, I, I kind of partake behind the scenes a little just because I was stressed out. So now my brain's not firing as well as it should be. In other words, I'm super stoned right now and my internet shit. So, okay, here we go. P. Diddy. Yeah, <laughs> looks like Epstein, right? So in early January of this year, Cat Williams stated on the, the Club Shay Shay podcast that he turned down Diddy's invites to uh, parties, among other things. He says, I've turned down. Yeah, we remember this video, right? I brought you guys this video when it happened, right? Cat burned a bunch of people down. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Cat Williams. Like, no, not they offered him 50 million and he turned it down. Who going to turn down 50 million? Now, I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling yes! you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell him no. I, I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say them yeah, so I need, freely. Kid, kid, I need, kid, I need another one. You, here, get you another one. Thank you, kid. sir. Thank you. Come on. Because early on, you was accusing me of being... Cat. Man. Cat. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, but you know, the, the, some of these people... Martin so... tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You're my young partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word, my nigga. Go do what you got to do. Yeah, when you come back, Martin I'm in your movie. Shit. Don't trip. Maybe I don't need to see the script or nothing. Did. You know, we get in that they office and this fool pull out. Or some shit. Big Mama's house, too. I almost died. I almost died. Yeah. Um, that is not shocking. Cat burned a lot of people to the ground with that interview. It was a great freaking interview. I'm going to do an update real quick just to see if I can get my internet to quit lagging. Bear with me. I'll probably bl flash out for a second, but I'll be right back. Okay. Re okay. 
I think I'm back. I think you guys can see me. Let me get the chat back in here. Okay, we're we're good to go. Okay. I just want to do that. Sometimes there gets some lag between the deck and stuff. I don't know. My internet's being kind of clunky this morning, but my internet, I'm just thankful I have it because I literally lived without it for 24 hours. <laughs> it sucked. It's so sucked. Okay. So a lot of talk about Jay-Z, you know, um, Jay-Z and uh, Diddy were close. There's a lot of conspiracies. Like I could literally go down the ritual the death ritual that got Diddy into the industry. And there was a fire. Um, God, where was it? Was it in, it was in, uh, it was in uh, Harlem, Harlem. This was back in the nineties. And some say it was a ritual, just like the Travis Scott concert a couple of years ago. And uh, there, there is, oh my God, Martin too. You guys just all of Hollywood. I, when I tell you all of Hollywood, people go, no, it's not all of them. It's all of them. You don't get to be in that space unless they control you. Like I saw a video the other day of um, what was it? The Emmys, right? You know how they they all walk the red carpet and the photographers take pictures of them. Well, obviously, something had been going on behind the scenes before all these actors came out there to have their picture taken because they're all bawling. They all have red eyes. None of them are smiling. I mean, that they're, they're controlled. And how are they controlled? By this. Diddy had cameras in every single room of his house, just like Epstein. And, and it's all sex and drugs and free love. You've got to understand what Hollywood is. Hollywood is not like us. They have, they have no humility. You can walk into a room with the open door and see two, two superstars getting it on. And that shit is videotaped and it's used as leverage against them. If they don't tote the narrative, then they'll ruin them. That's how this works. And this is how it worked for Epstein too. So yeah, Jay-Z is missing, but 50 Cent has had a classic, uh, rivalry hate for jay-z over the years um you know there's a lot in that one too but he was he was tweeting like mad yesterday these are hilarious 50 cent says here is jay-z's last report reported scene waving at puffy's jet lol and then it says uh 50 cent says anybody seen jay-z lol puff said there ain't answering his phone <laughs> yeah puff said he ain't answering his phone too funny. Uh, I think Jay-Z might be one of the fallout from this. And I, like I said, I'll have to go down. But it explains a lot, right? Right? Remember that video I brought for you guys? I think it was an uncensored with Jay-Z and Marina Abramovic. You know, you know, the witch of the elite. Like, she's the Illuminati's witch. You guys remember this video. See me and that's the man. Wonderful for vampire. Music. She wants to suck your energy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And music always being the most immaterial form of art, yeah. which is so wonderful. Dumb cogs. <laughs> That's all. Dumb cogs. It makes sense, right? Because they're all connected. So why would it be Homeland Security? That was my question is like, why is it Homeland Security if he's running a trafficking ring? Because it was in multiple uh, places. But it would that would mean someone they'd have to have evidence of him bringing them across the border. Right. That's what I think that means anyways. So don't forget that Diddy's good friends with Obama. Oh, Yeah. Obama was hanging out at Diddy's. Now, tomorrow, if you join me, I'm going to have a special video. And this video is going to melt your fucking mind. It's Obama. It's a very wet behind the ears, very young Obama hanging out with Diddy for, I think, a get out the vote or a rock the vote type of event back in the late 90s. So Obama wasn't shit. And you can tell Obama is nervous. He He's not as well spoken as we know Obama to be. He's kind of, 
you know, uh, uh, I don't know. But and Diddy even calls him out for it. Like, I'm so cool. I don't have to wipe my brow. Look at you all nervous and shit. Like, it's an Obama we've never seen before. I was shocked when I saw the video. Like, holy shit, I never seen that Obama before. It's the unexperienced, uh, uh, not ahead of the uh, pyramid, but at the bottom of the pyramid, Obama. And it's it's shocking. So I'm going to have that tomorrow. I couldn't share it to this show because YouTube was like, oh, no, you can't share those type of videos. So anyways, no, things aren't getting worse. They're just getting more obvious. You know, we were told 2024 was going to be the year of the great uh, 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 lifting of the veil, right? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it'll be truth will be the word for this year. Who knows? So, yeah, 50 Cent still making fun of uh, Jay-Z uh, or uh, Diddy. Let's see. The, the mainstream media, unawkward masses, Epstein Island, Vatican, royal family, D.C. pedo ring, pedo gate, mega churches, Nexium, Hollywood. Yeah, there's a bunch of cracks in that dam. And when it breaks, it's going to break. And all we need is some medium level celebrities to fucking grow some balls and tell the truth, but they won't do it because they know they'll get right. We just need a few of them to have some courage and, and tell on these guys be like, Oh yeah, that's what they're doing. Look what they did to Cappy. They drove Cappy insane and they either made him jump off a bridge or they pushed him off a bridge. That's, you know, I don't know. I've, I've looked very, very deep into the Isaac happy. I've seen the videos. I've listened to the podcast of the woman who was with him, the moments leading up to that event, the days leading up to that event. And I still can't tell you what happened to Cappy. Honestly, I'm going to give you my honest opinion and it might blow your mind. He, they were doing skull, um, that, what is it? Skull technology where they literally can fucking send voices and they can send voices into your radio. They can send voices into your head. And I know you guys think that's probably batshit crazy, but the technology exists. They do have it and they do use it. And when you hear the stories about the final days, like the final 24 hours of Isaac Cappy, the people around him and that were with him, were hearing it too. They were hearing it too. So how the hell he ended up on that bridge jumping? There was nobody around him. I get there was nobody around him, but uh, Mancherian candidate much? That's all I'm going to say. I think there was some programming involved in that. They got into his head and they freaking pushed him off that bridge. And I know that sounds, oh, that's, that's TV. That's a movie. No, that's reality. And we need to wake up and realize that they have that type of technology and they're using it on us daily. It's like trying to get people to understand what's going on with 5G and five, uh, 6G, like it's 7G. Like people can't even wrap their mind around it because we are uneducated masses at the end of the day. Anyways, this was an, a crazy thread. If you want to go check it out, it's Green Lives Matter. Diddy was allegedly running a honeypot blackmail operation, just like Epstein. Guess who was given legitimacy to his operation? Oh, yes. Prince Harry. The royals. No, the royals aren't messed up with the whole kitty thing. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. They all are. A uh, lawsuit alleges that Sean Combs has recordings of celebrity music label executives, politicians and athletes in compromising positions. And he has had hidden cameras in every single room. This is how, you know, Diddy was working as a Jeffrey Epstein type for the cabal. The Diddy scandals continue to expand and red pill the world. Uh, yeah, that was a great, there's some really great feeds out there. I mean, literally just go click on one of the hashtags and you can fall down those rabbit holes. So uh, want to know what the, this really means? It means the person is willing to turn a blind eye to pedophilia and child sacrifice in order to advance their career. That's exactly what that means. And at this point, Congress just is an arms dealer, no education, no access to health care, and uh, no housing, no clean drinking water, but we finance your war. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to leave that note on there. That's a good note <laughs> for, for sure because it's the reality of uh, this country. So, uh, oh, and join me tomorrow. I have actual footage from inside Diddy's place, but I can't run it here because TMZ has got their fucking trademark all over it. Goddamn TMZ. Uh, so yeah, I'll be able to run it tomorrow on Rumble and Rockfin for you guys. But yeah, that's that's inside one of his tossed places. So, you know, they toss like what his place in Miami, his place in Hawaii and his place in uh, New York. Yeah, just like Epstein. 
Except for, uh, we don't know if, if Diddy has a uh, Zoro's type of ranch, right? Is Diddy out there trying to repopulate the world? He does have a shit ton of kids, I will tell you that. And he was adopting a bunch. Or, or fake adopting. I don't know what the hell that was about. <laughs> Too crazy. Yeah, Steph is wonderful. We love Steph. And Steph hates when you say, you guys, and I do it constantly. And every time it comes out of my mouth, I, I Steph pops into my head and says, I'm not a man. <laughs> or something like, I'm not a guy. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta stop doing that though. Freaking stuff. Oh, uh, this is just a stupid ass story. The media eating its own uh, mainstream media, MSNBS. So of course, uh, they hired Roma McDaniel, Roma Ron, Rona McDaniels, uh, being out of NBC after backlash for on-air hosts. Yeah, this is just a stupid story, and I think I'm gonna skip it because we started so late today. But we'll hear Glenn Greenwald's take on it, because hell yeah, uh, I'd rather play Glenn Greenwald than mainstream media any effing day. Who wants to hear Rachel Meadow right now? Not me. Right now, there is this remarkable and borderline hilarious scandal that is taking place inside of NBC and MSNBC as a result of the decision of NBC News to hire... Ronna McDaniel, who until a few months ago, a couple of months ago, was the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with her, she is Mitt Romney's niece. That's obviously how she got her in into politics, like so many people in the United States who are in very what? Uh, She's uh, various uh, positions of influence and power in Washington. She got her start because her one of her family members, Mitt Romney, has uh, obvious political influence in the Republican Party. He was the party's presidential nominee in 2012, and now his niece, uh, at least until recently, was the chair of the party. She's a very conventional figure. In fact, so conventional that the base of the party really disliked her and actually is the reason she ended up being driven out. Trump oh, supporters didn't trust her. Him. Donald Trump. Oh, I was trying to speed it up. <laughs> Damn it. I was trying to speed it up because it's like a five minute clip. Uh, let me get it. I'll get it back to where it needs to be. Okay, come on, come on, come on. And I'm locking up too. So that isn't helping. Like it's just sitting here spinning now. Just spinning. Oh my gosh, come on, internet. This day has not been my day, but I'm not like, going to let it get me down. I'm just not. We'll move on. That clip doesn't want to play, and my internet is like, I'm in slow motion right now. I hope you guys can see me. I hope the stream's going out and clear. I'm just going to be a crapshoot and say it is. So, uh, on my watch, healthcare is a right in this country, not a privilege, says o uh, says o Biden for sure. All Americans deserve the peace of mind that if an illness strikes or an accident occurs, you can get the care you need. Uh, yeah, he, that's what the Democrats are toting right now. They tweeted that out yesterday. They're banging the drums about the Affordable Care Act. Look at all the things we gave you, right? What did you give me? A broken fucking system that uh, is not helping a huge a chunk of America. They act like everybody in the country has health care. That's not the fucking reality. I live in a blue state that managed to push it at the state level, which is one of the very few states. But there's a lot of states out there where there's still millions of Americans without health care or access, as they like to call it. Right. So uh, Obamacare or Trump care. Doesn't really matter when they're both written by lobbyists and insurance companies. Oh, Mint Press News. Telling it like it is. Heck yeah. Uh, and that's the reality of it. Doesn't matter. Trump care, Obamacare. They can put any any duopoly name on it and it's still going to be the same shit sold to you by big insurance and big pharma and, you know, you know. But just a reminder, Biden suggests that he would veto Medicare for all if or over its price tag. Now, this was uh, March of 2020. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he said it for a long fucking time, just like he wants to come for Social Security. How many times have we heard Biden say he's going to come for Social Security? Many, many times. So um, <laughs> so he had to roll Obama out to help push this uh, sale on the fact that, hey, the Democrats are giving you health care. And uh, this is what Obama had to say. Before the ACA, young adults could be kicked off their parents' health care plan, often right when they were getting ready to head out on their own. And if you had a pre-existing condition, 
The same companies could deny you coverage. They could charge you more. So the ACA changed all that. Now health care plans are required to let young adults stay on their parents' plan until they're 26. Insurance companies, they can't deny somebody coverage or change them simply because they have a pre-existing condition like diabetes or asthma. So all that stuff's important because while young people are generally pretty healthy, all it takes is one diagnosis or one injury, one accident to throw off your plans if you don't have insurance. And thanks to the ACA, young people everywhere have some security, they have some freedom to choose how they live their lives. And, that, and that's really what the ACA is all about. Now, like any freedom, we can't take this one for granted. Right now, the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party for president says he wants to repeal the entirety of the ACA. And that would mean kicking millions of young people off their parents' health insurance, like raising costs at a time like when a lot of folks kids. are just starting out. We can't let that happen. We've got to keep building on the ACA, expanding coverage, lowering costs for more people. We've gone too far to come back. And that's what Joe and Kamala believe. That's what they've done while they've been in office. And that's oh why God. this election is so important. Shut up already. Thank you. God, I thought that guy was never going to stop. <laughs> but the children and they're not even kids, right? They're adults. But and I get it because I came out at 18 with uh, finance, with medical debt. I did. I started out my adult life with a shit ton of medical debt. Uh, not that I say our kids have to, uh, but we need a better system than the, you know, the Affordable Care Act. It, it, it's not the system. It's not the one that is going to cover everybody in the country and make it to where you can just go to a doctor and get shit covered. Even now, you're not getting shit covered. I don't know how many times I get bills kicked back, even for my mother-in-law, who's on every type of Medicare possible, you know, ADB for yeah, all of it. And they still, oh, here's a $300 bill for this, you know. No, it's hand in hand with lobbyists and the insurance companies and Big Pharma, we know it. He's like a president, but for stupid people. Biden signs a $1.2 trillion budget, uh, budget bill devoted to war and genocide. Biden's budget for world war, the budget legislation signed into law by President Joe Biden on Saturday, provides the largest amount in history for U.S. military spending of that $1.2 trillion approximately to, um, to six federal departments. The Pentagon claims more than two-thirds about... 825 billion the separate budget bill signed by Biden on March 8th for the other six federal departments includes 23.8 billion for the US nuclear weapons program ran by the Department of Energy so maybe you know when they say there's stuff in the news going on look to see what they're not talking about that's what they're not talking about that is exactly what they're not talking about. They don't want you to know that it is the biggest U.S. military spending in history. In history, because, you know, we're funding how many wars now? And we might start a few more. Just depends. We can afford it, according to uh, Janet Yellen <laughs> at the end of the day. Ah, uh, good news. We finally got the announcement announcing uh, JFK Jr.'s running mate, Nicole Shashanahan. <laughs> as his vice presidential pick after months of speculation. Uh, yeah, she's so qualified. She's got a big fat fucking checkbook. So that's what got her there, right? <laughs> anyway, so uh, RFK, RFK Jr.'s independent presidential bid attracts unprecedented support. And uh, I actually stole this one from Jax. Thanks, Jax. This is funny. Uh, Kyle Kalinske, you know him as Malibu Ken. Anyways, LOL, RFK Jr. picked this VP because she has a shit ton of money and he wants to fuck her. <laughs> yeah, probably so. He we, he does have a little bit of a sex thing. He, he like, remember he had binders of women or some shit. <laughs> He's been caught up a couple of times with his pants down, if you know what I mean. So we know that about him. He's a dog. He's a dog. He's a player as they would say. And uh, yeah, this is just whatever. Whatever. If you're still on board with RFK Jr., I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're buying into the fantasy of Camelot again, and you need to wake the fuck up because that guy ain't going to do shit. And if he actually got into a place of power, which they will, those in control will never let that happen. 
Uh, he would just do their bidding. I mean, he might say some right shit about some right shit, but even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? So, uh, yeah, I love that he fights back against Big Pharma. I've absolutely supported uh, the, what is it, the Children's Health Defense. I mean, uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean he's not a fucking Zionist. Yeah, he's a Zionist at the end of the day. So, uh, disfacted voting block, uh, <laughs> disaffected voting block, the Obama template, RFK Jr., uh, freshly walking leftists who can uh, excuse one issue. And that's just it. Yeah, we can excuse that issue. What? It's okay. It's okay. Jimmy Dore, this was funny. Oh, freaking Al Gore. Oh my God, this is so bad. When Al Gore advocated, advocates banning private jets and traveling and uh, closes down 800 U.S. military bases that are spread all over the globe, then I will know he's serious about reducing carbon emissions. Until then, I'm going to treat him like a liar who is trying to manipulate me and use fear of climate change to do it. No, them co-opt the message? No way. 2023, officially the hottest year on record, deadly heat. Come on, play, play, play. Come on, come on, you can do it. I guess we're not supposed to listen to Gore. Heat waves, catastrophic <laughs> floods, devastating wildfires, more powerful storms. We've gotten dangerously close to the 1.5 degree yeah. Celsius threshold beyond which experts say humanity and the pup planet will struggle to adapt. What do you think 2024 will look like? Well, we still have the ability to, to seize control of our destiny. Here's the good news, Jake. If we stop adding to the overburden of these greenhouse gas pollutants in the sky, if we reach what they it. call true net zero and stop adding to the heat trapping stop capacity up there, the temperatures will stop going up right away. And if we stay at true net zero, half of the human cause to greenhouse pollution will this. fall out of the atmosphere in as little as 25 to 30 years. We have the ability to do this. And it's not impractical because we now have the cheapest new source of energy in the history of the world with solar electricity and wind electricity. And the electric vehicles reach 20% of sales globally this year. The International Energy Agency says that we've got all of the solutions that we need with proven deployment models to cut the emissions in half this decade. And we've got a clear line of sight to get the rest of it done before mid-century. That's the good news. That's the That's good vision. The good but what happens if the world doesn't act? What, what's the worst case scenario? Well, the scientists who warned us of these <laughs> mega storms and the, the floods and mudslides and droughts and the ice melting and the sea level rising and the storms getting stronger and the tropical diseases and uh, climate migrants crossing international borders in larger numbers, they were dead right when they warned us about this. And so we need to pay more attention to them now. Here's one thing they say, if we don't take action, there could be as many as one billion climate refugees crossing international uh, borders in the next several decades. Well, a few million has contributed to this uh, wave of populist authoritarianism and dictatorships and so forth. Uh, what would a billion do? We can't do this. We could lose our capacity for self-governance. Already we're seeing we people driven the from the places they've always called home, and we're seeing an expansion of areas in the world that are, are physiologically unlivable now because of the combination he of heat and humidity. They're relatively small areas now, but if we don't act, they will expand to include most of India, large parts of uh, northern South America, the Philippines, Indonesia, Pakistan, the list goes on. Uh, our, the survival of our civilization is at stake. Oh, my God. That was so gross. That was so bad. That was so much fear mongering and leave it to State of the Union to put that shit out there. Who still watches this crap? Oh, Keith Oberman. That's who. That's right. Damn it. How dare you? I love this meme. <laughs> She's eating a Big Mac on Taylor Swift's jet. Yeah, that's the reality of it. Do as I say. Don't do as I do. And you're the problem. And uh, yeah, we're we're over it. I, you know, when the trailer park understands that they're, they're being duped by the Green New Deal, uh, there ain't no fucking hope for any, anything else. So uh, how government sunshine drives global warming. Yeah, they've been doing this for a while, back in the Nixon days. This was from 1970. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there was some really good scares back in the 70s, wasn't there? 
I don't know them because I was just a baby. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of people who fly in private jets to a meeting where they discuss how to take away my car and feed me bugs. And that's just me. Yeah, I've had a couple of those where I was refaced onto them. I didn't have time to go look for them. Oh my gosh, I've been so busy this week. Jester to know, he says carbon tax makes weather gooder. Woo, that, yeah, sham wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a scam wow. And uh, the image of the Baltimore, so Justin Trudeau's ego tweeted this out. Of course, I think this is satire. Uh, Justin Trudeau's ego. The image of the Baltimore Bridge collapsing are shocking, and my government is taking steps to keep Canadians safe. That is why we are implementing a new bridge tax. Anyone going over or under the bridge will pay $100, which will be used to fight systematic racism and climate change. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a uh, satire, but yeah, pretty damn close. The reason it's satire is because it's pretty goddamn close to what they do. Uh, that's what makes us laugh. Early warning signs of fascism, destruction of religion, confiscation of guns, uh, identif identification of enemies as a unifying cause. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're seeing that one big time right now, right? Dissident for uh, individual rights, control over energy, control over mass media, control over communication, School indoctrination, attack on free speech, warrantless a spying. Oh, yeah, they don't do that at all. Doomsday fear mongering. Oh, yeah, I love that one. But I think we're all guilty of that one, right? And fraudulent elections. The same people telling you this guy's uh, overvalued his assets also believe this guy's artwork is worth $1.5 million. Yeah, that's true. There is definitely a double standard, right? Uh, the View, my God. I saw a clip from The View the other day that was just mind-meltingly stupid, and they were talking. They love to tote that. Trump's got 88 indictments. Why would you vote for a criminal? Like, oh, my God. Biden's a criminal, too, you dumb fools. It's just those hens need to shut the hell up over there. Let's see if I can actually see this. So Hillary Clinton posted this yesterday. She says, does this sound like a man who should have access to the nuclear codes again? And it says, uh, crooked Pelosi, there should be no fine, did nothing wrong. Why should I be forced to sell my babies because of corporate New York judge and the AG set a fake and ridiculous number? Take his cash so that he can't use it to defeat his political opponents, crooked Joe Biden, election interference, all headed up by the White House. That includes F Fanny and the corrupt Manhattan DA. Uh, Braggs admitted there was no crime. Uh, what mortified by what Mark, Pock what is that? Palm Pomperance did, and he should be witch hunted. Okay, so I I have been I'm out of practice at speaking Trump. Sorry, what can I say? Uh, we used to have to do this every day. Remember during the Trump administration, every fucking day, fifty fucking tweets that you had to decode and decipher. Yeah, I mean Trump's got his own fucking language. He does these short, crooked Pelosi. There should be no fine. I mean, that's what he does. Doesn't make any sense. But Hillary's very worried about him having the nuclear codes. She would rather have them herself. Okay, let's see. Oh, we finally made it to what the fuck? What the fuck? We got a bunch in here. Dollar Tree says they will be raising their maximum price to $7. What the fuck? Yeah, I told you guys back in November this was coming. My daughter works at a dollar store, but ironically, the manager of a different dollar store told me that they were getting ready to raise the prices. So they do this. Uh, they roll it out slowly. They're saying a maximum price is $7. So what that means is the stuff that's $5, now $5 at the dollar store, will be $7. And everybody says, yeah, but what about the base price for everything else? It's supposed to be a dollar, which is what, a dollar twenty-five now? It's going to go up to $2. But they got to roll this one out on us first. And then I would say probably three months, six months from now, they'll definitely roll out the $2 raise. So it'll be $2 for everything at the dollar store. I told you it was coming. I've been warning you this for... I don't know, almost six months now. So not shocked, but it, I am pissed. They're, they're gouging the poor, right? We know that. Uh, Biden doesn't want his Senate record unsealed because there was there would be evidence of sexual assault complaint filed by Tareed in 1993. 
Oh, I had this article for you guys. I've been sitting on this for a while. Biden sexual assault accuser Tar Reid. Reid has reportedly called on Biden to release the records from his 36 years as a senator, which are currently inaccessible, accessible to the public and are kept at the University of Delaware. It says, I better text Jill. Jill, I'm in the bathroom. I forgot to pull my pants down again. Uh, I had this article. This was a good article. It was a good read. Uh, if you're following what's going on with Tara, her lawyers have uh, laid, I don't know what it is. It's not a lawsuit, but it's like she there a request for her to testify before a, com a committee. And uh, this whole Delaware thing, uh, I think they're re-looking at... Um, they got turned down for their FICA, I think, on these uh, reports at, from the University of Delaware. And now I think a higher court has got involved and they might tell them they have to release it because they're like, no, no, we'll sit on it till after Biden's out of office. And th that's what they've been saying all this whole time. So she might be making headway. Uh, Jilly says Tara interviewed Victor about very interesting. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I've been so busy this week. I haven't got to watch anybody. I caught a little bit of Jimmy the other day, but uh, I'm hoping to catch moats this afternoon. Canada's maple syrup reserve almost empty as sap season at risk of becoming another casualty of a winner that wasn't. Will maple syrup always be available for breakfast? A uh, Let's see. A collision of forces have brought the billion plus dollar, dollar industry to uncertain moment. Uh, yeah, we've known this for a while that uh, we were running out of syrup, right? I don't know if I can say I've ever even had real maple syrup, maybe in a restaurant, you know, like and I didn't even know it. But uh, I'm an American. We get that fucking corn syrup fucking flavored shit. I don't. Mrs. Butterworth is not real syrup, right? That's not real maple syrup. It's got maple flavoring. And a lot of times that maple flavoring is the imitation. So, yeah, that seems like it sounds like a sticky situation, says Mastermind. <laughs> it's it's not a sticky situation. That's the problem. I like caro syrup. Um, I was raised on caro syrup. That's what poor people, you know, that's how they fed their babies in the 30s and 40s. Like, that was my grandma's go-to. Uh, if you're poor, here's a pancake, throw some caro syrup on it and some powdered sugar, you know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That, that's sad to me, but we're losing a lot of, I thought that there was like a fungus or something that was killing the maples. Uh, chestnuts, I know, are being wiped out, right? We lost the chestnuts pretty much. Very sad. All the shit we're losing. And it's due to us. I mean, we can't deny that. We know it's the, the shit we're doing that causes uh, all these things to die off. Uh, did you guys see this crazy shit? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Oh, come on, play, because it's so funny. It is so funny. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. Oh, try again, try again. It's thinking. It's buffering. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Okay, I get it. There you go. What the fuck? Why? That seems kind of weird. Yeah, it seems kind of weird. I'm expecting uh, Marina Abramovich to come popping out at any second, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Get a life. This is not art. In no way is this art. We've been taught as children, you don't put plastic over your face. I mean, come on. How is the What the fuck? <laughs> That's why this is what the fuck. Oh, look at me. I did something special. I got sucked into a bag. <laughs> anyway, how can you breathe? I think they have an air hose in there. If you see on the thumbnail, you can kind of see, see how she's got this. It's like, you know, have you ever seen the mermaids? They have swimming mermaids, like in Miami and in the big casino pools and shit. They have a hose, like they catch air from, I guess. But that's just not a good thing to, to show a kid, right? Because then a kid will think they'll be able to do that. And that could that could injure somebody at the end of the day. <laughs> Freeze dried people. <laughs> Get the seal of meal freaking uh, heated up for sure. I loved my seal meal. I had a seal meal for many years and I loved that damn thing. It was amazing. 
why'd the rock band quit moving? Gosh, I got, I had so many issues today. I don't care. I'm just over it. This is funny. I don't know how to know if your chicken is a fed. So do you have chickens? Are they feds? Well, this is how you find out if your chicken is a fed. Tired of coming home after a long day of committing tax fraud? Does it feel like you're being watched in your own house? You're not imagining it. Here are my top three tips to find out whether or not your chicken is a fed. Number one, check around the coop. What you want to be finding here is eggs and chicken shit. If instead you're finding MK Ultra documents, that is not a good sign. Stay vigilant. Number two, when listening to your bird, if instead of fucking, they're relaying numbers in a seemingly random order, that is not a chicken, that is a government funded number station. Again, not what you want. Last but not least, number three, look for a response. Or within each shot of your chicken, casually say something like, I think Ted Kaczynski did nothing wrong. If your bird remains silent, they have begun recording your conversation and are uploading your coordinates. That is a fed, and if you do not act immediately, the news is going to say that you drowned while swimming. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck, Godspeed, and trust me. <laughs> I'm going to have to take that one to Beauty and the Boomer, because it's just too fucking funny. How to know if your chicken is a fed. <laughs> uh, just ask him or tell him that Ted Kaczynski did a good thing, and if he says nothing and starts recording you. <laughs> too funny. That was cute. That was cute. I need to see more content like that for sure. Uh, this is some creepy ass technology. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Let's figure it out together. This is how they sell most of the things that they keep us enslaved. Oh, look what AI can do. What a memory you can create with your aging loved ones. Let's put AI everywhere. They always show you the nicest, happiest things uh, about new tech can do while implementing it in ways that use it against us. Okay, let's see what's grandpa doing. Thank God. Holy smokes. She's alive. Yeah, it brings the picture to life. Look, look at that smoke. Oh, God. That's your Lola. Isn't it amazing that I, technology? I, I, I can't believe it. Oh. I don't know why we need to watch five minutes of that, but anyways, yeah, I that's reface technology. We've been using reface technology for years here, but uh, yeah, it's kind of cool, I guess, if if it's the first time seeing it. But uh, my, I don't have to worry about my grandkids. I've got like thousands and thousands and hours on of content on the internet, so when I'm gone, they'll have plenty of me to watch if they want for sure. Uh, Hollywood, go fuck yourself. Well, they definitely can. Let's see what we got in here. Did you guys see this? There's going to be a spinoff from Breaking Bad because, you know, the high school teacher who couldn't afford his medical bills and decided to start manufacturing meth is the biggest freaking hit of all times. It still is. It still is. And so, yeah, new spinoff, Heisenberg, August 2024. I got to say, I'm super fucking excited for this. I've loved that whole entire series. Uh, AMC does good work. I will give them that. Uh, Walking Dead, they've got the new Walking Dead spinoffs, too, that have been uh, excellent, I think. Definitely one of the channels worth streaming or buying and streaming. God, my internet is so slow. Like, it'll lock up in my studio, and then I'll just see me go real fast and catch up. It's crazy. <laughs> this has been a crazy day. This is funny. Axel Rose, did you know that Axel is part of the Let's Censor the Internet group? You know, you love him. Guns and Roses, or Bombs and Tulips, as we've always called them. <laughs> Anyways, check this out. This is a funny little... I just brought you, like, the first minute of it. It's hilarious. Axl Rose has one of the worst reputations in the music industry, with many falling victim to his infamous temper. Whether he's getting into fistfights with other musicians, inciting dangerous riots, or even bullying smaller bands. These are some of the people that have been destroyed, intimidated, and dismantled by the fury of Axl Rose, starting with the Fat Axl incident. Back in 2011, the singer ignited an online frenzy when new photos of him surfaced, revealing his no noticeable weight gain. Fans quickly embraced the meme and created images of the singer featuring captions such as Sweet Pie O' Mine, Knock Knock Knocking on McDonald's Doors, and Welcome to the Jungle We've Got Tons of Cake. With the fat Axel craze spreading like wildfire online, Axel, on the other hand, was enraged and subsequently demanded the removal of the unflattering images from the internet. The singer even went as far as putting his lawyers on the case 
case, having them issue copyright takedown notices to eliminate any instances of Fat Axel photos. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, his efforts to kill the meme backfired, only serving to draw even more attention to the very images he was trying to destroy. But even during the early days of Guns N' Roses, Axel was not easy to get along with. In 1988, while they were touring to promote their debut album, Appetite Okay, so I just brought you the beginning of that. So this, he's got a history of doing this. If you remember back in the 90s, there's an old video of him stage diving and ripping a camera out of somebody's hand. He does not like pictures taken of him that he doesn't authorize. He doesn't want any unauthorized photos out there of him. And yeah, so he tried to clear some images off the internet. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. They're out there. They're glorious. They're hilarious. I think all you have to type in is Fat Axel and... All of those memes will pop up. Too funny. Uh, Katy Perry's lost her freaking mind. Have you seen this creepy baby room video? What is going on with these people? I know they're Illuminati and blah, blah, blah. But uh, <laughs> I think it freaked her baby out. I think he's trying to get away from her anyways or her. One. I'm going to show you my baby room. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ready? Just a little. Just a little sneak peek. Okay, 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 okay. So I have some little clothes on the wall. <laughs> okay. And then I have like a little pink room with a little. You can barely see it. This is my. It gets weirder. Chair. Wait. <laughs> little lights I love so much oh god could you imagine living with that this little place to change the diapers is she still pregnant I feel like she's been pregnant for like five years or something and this little mobile <laughs> why why <laughs> Lights. So weird. How much longer of this crap? Do you want to see an outfit? Maybe you want to see an outfit. Just weird. What is up with the weird ass crying? Ah. Oprah and Harvey Weinstein broke her brain. Oh, Eggos, an ego <laughs> dress. So weird. So oh, weird. It's an ego dress. What is up with that crap? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> weird, weird. Hollywood, go F yourself. Just so fucking weird. Shooter McGavin, he's out there tweeting. You might remember Shooter McGavin. Yeah. <laughs> he got into a fight once. And uh, yeah, no way I'm losing to this guy again in the sequel. Yeah, I'm with you, Shooter. You should not be losing to that guy. And uh, Cotty Womple. Cotty Womple means. To travel purposely towards an as yet unknown destination. I like that. Cotty Womple. I'm going to Cotty Womple my way over there. Uh, that's a crazy word. Uh, me, Mally, we finally made it. What a day it's been. My God. Hey, thank you for hanging in there with me during this crazy tech filled error show. <laughs> We're going to get the kinks knocked out. I hate it, but I will get into that new studio. I will. Uh, the truth's out. People will get angry anytime soon. Anytime now. Yeah, not happening. Yeah. People just want to stay asleep in the system, don't they? Uh, let's see. They can't balance the budget, but they all become millionaires. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But does the budget really matter? Uh, when I get a, a work when I get a work call while I'm trying to post memes on Twitter, what do you want? Yeah, I don't fuck with it. I hate getting interrupted when I'm in the middle of a tweet. Don't you? Like if I'm typing it and somebody starts talking to me, I'm just like, oh. Now I just totally lost my train of thought. I got to delete it and think about it. Yeah, it, it always messes me up if I'm uh, tweeting something out. It's almost Easter lamb cake season. Oh, yum. What the fuck is an Easter lamb cake? I've never seen one, but that's terrifying. Very terrifying. <laughs> and 
uh, face palm Sunday. Honestly, I can't even with these people. <laughs> yeah, so that one's pretty funny. And uh, when you were all stoked thinking humanity would awaken, but the last two psychops proved 99% are still asleep. Oh, gosh, that's depressing. That is depressing. The stock market has little to do with the average person and shouldn't be used to measure the actual health of the economy. Oh, yeah. Now that I got you to look, that's the point, right? Uh, an Italian-American immigrant is held still and forced to watch the horrors as pineapple is added to pizza for the first time. Circa Brooklyn, New York, 1914. <laughs> I'm going to send that one on over to pasta. That one's pretty funny. Or Kit, right? The pizza wars. The pizza wars have been going on for a long fucking time. I got to say I break on the side of New York pizza. I, I like my pie foldable. <laughs> Fold that pizza. The thinner the crust, the better, as I always say. Uh, war is when your government tells you who the enemy is. Revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. Figure it out. Come on. Figure it out. Um, he who follows the herd only sees assholes. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's how that works for sure. A bunch of assholes. Anxiety is literally just conspiracy theories about yourself. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? <laughs> yeah. I met him, Andre Andrews. Uh, it was the rock, the no TPP, right? Total prima donna. Like, I, I wasn't impressed. I just got to say, I wasn't impressed. Uh, when you find, when, what's your final thought? because before making big decisions fuck it yeah i do that what is your final thought before making big decisions ah fuck it yeah <laughs> yeah what's the worst that can happen yeah i think i have that attitude for the last 28 years all you've done is fix mistakes in everything i say that's 29 years <laughs> that one's funny because that is the reality of long-term relationships uh hexing because murder is wrong <laughs> yeah hexing i could hex a few i put a bone in a shoe and let my dog uh my dog patrol my yard i love how quiet my neighborhood is now <laughs> that's pretty creepy you know i live up uh, where they keep finding all those uh feet washed up on the beach and it looks just like that when they wash them it's like shoes like when they find them it'll just be a shoe with a freaking leg sticking out of it or a bunch of uh feet bone in it yeah pretty creepy i was i think i've covered that a couple of times the conspiracies behind that like who where are they coming from where are all these legs and feet washing up on uh washington shores for we don't know uh, my day was pretty rotten so i took a little walk i had enough of people of their problems and their talk i went to the woodlands and my mood turned around real quick because after just a bit of time i found this awesome stick <laughs> i need to go play in the woods for sure uh i've i've been trapped in the house too long and she stopped and she heard what the trees said to her. And she sat there for hours, not wanting to leave. For the forest said nothing. It just let her breathe. Oh, that's a good one, too. I can't believe you got plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. That is cute. How would you get plastic surgery? And did you guys know this? I thought this was really cool. In, in case folks don't know, if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Live Monarch Foundation, they will send you milkweed seeds native for the, the area for free, native to your area for free. And if you uh, take a little screenshot right there, you can see the address. It's P.O. Box 1239 gainesville georgia 30514 and it says get milkweed now this actually does work it will bring the monarchs to your yard i know that i've seen it actually but here's the thing some areas consider that an uh an invasive species right and then <laughs> why can i say that word today anyways and they might ask you to rip it out just depends on where you live anyways trying to explain my schedule to people with my with normal working hours yeah my schedule is crazy and cats constantly look at you like you just asked them for a ride to the airport <laughs> yeah my cats do <laughs> that's pretty funny okay i think we made it through this show we did yay gosh tech problems my my new studio didn't launch 
and uh, I've had internet issues this morning. So thank you so much for hanging in there with me. It has been a hard, crazy morning. Thank you, Rockfin. I see Zoxo Voxo Vix is hanging out over there. And Jim and Nautilus. Good to see you, Nautilus. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Thanks for joining me. Um, Who else has been over here? I've had so many streams up today. So there's so many comments and so many chats that I just don't even have access to anymore. But I appreciate everybody who joined me over on the Rockfin, the multiple shows that went up on Rockfin and, and Rumble this morning. Uh, Jesse, week 28. Good to see you. Ty, Ty Blee. Good to see you. Welcome. Crone of Anarchy is hanging out on Rumble along with Ghost Art and Calif <laughs> Caligulations Carnation. Thank you so much for joining me. And Ghost Art, did I say Ghost Art? Ghost Art's over there. And let me get the YouTubes. We got Popeye hanging out on the YouTubes. Thank you so much, Popeye. Did you guys see this? Popeye got me this. Isn't it cool? Very cool. Uh, definitely calmed me down a couple of, like an hour ago. <laughs> I don't normally smoke in the morning, but this morning I was like, oh, I got to calm down. Anyways, kill your E. Gray Gross. Good to see you. Jilly loves hanging out and holding down the chat along with Mastermind Hour. Hey, if you didn't see, I hung out with Mastermind uh, last Friday. Go check it out. We had a great conversation, had fun. What's up, V? It's been a while. Good to see you. Uh, Jilly, Popeye, Steve. Steve's in here. Steve Guy. Cold Fusion Gaming. Always holding it down for me. My partner in crime. And uh, Peace Stuff. Good to see you. Retro Gamer 07. So retro. And Jax Page. Of course, Jax Page. Amazing contributor to so many of us in independent media. Jax, I see you getting shouted out everywhere. I was hanging out over in RBN last night with uh, Misty. And she shouted you out as well she should. We support. We uh, appreciate your support. We, we love you guys. All of you guys that are tweeting us out constantly when we go live. We appreciate it so much. Fred Edwards. Uh, there's so many of you. What's up, Salty? Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Rad Angel, you hanging out for your lunch hour? Just sneak away. Um, who else? Who else is in here? Of course, this isn't everybody hanging out. John, good to see you. John H is hanging out. Bad cookies. I, I threw some more wrenches. I, I hope you guys got your wrenches. If you don't have a wrench at the trailer park, let me know. I try to give them to you as I see you guys coming in and you don't have them. And uh, hey, guys be kind with the with the wrenches we do democracy in the chat everybody gets a wrench but that doesn't mean you wield that thing around and knock the shit out of each other because that's not what it's for that's not what it's for can we just agree to get along and well and everybody who joined me over on the different youtubes today thank you guys so much i appreciate it i have a very special show for you guys tomorrow that's right i'm going again this will be my third in a row uh here you are, Trailer Park Pundit Uncensored, and it is going to be a hell of a show. I have been stockpiling stuff for weeks. We haven't done an Uncensored in months, so I have folders full of stuff. I mean, I have more stuff. I could probably do like five shows. Uh, Jilly, thank you. I got a lot of stuff from you. I still need to add that one video, the the crazy cell phone video. I'm going to get that one on the deck. So I'll be working on that this afternoon. But yeah, join me tomorrow. Um, I'm going live. 10 a.m. normal time. I figure we'll just get it done and over with. And uh, it'll be fun. I got a lot of stuff on there. So, but it's only on Rough and Rumble and the X's. You if you if you normally watch on YouTube, you can watch over on X. You don't have to go to Rockfin or Rumble. You can go directly to my page on, you know, my profile on X and it'll be live there. So if you want to join us for Uncensored tomorrow, that's where Uncensored will be. There'll be a lot of stuff I can't run over there. And then we have Beauty and the Boomer Saturday night. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be done yet or not, but I know they're working on some fucking kick-ass things that are just going to blow your guys' mind. I saw it last night and I was just like, it's something we've been talking about and something we've been wanting to do for since the beginning. And it, they're finally getting to the stage of getting doing it and it's so amazing uh here's the card for saturday night uh they've been manipulating the background so you notice the the snow is going to turn to spring in the background i love that come on play <laughs> Like we made it 
That would be really cool if you made the trees bloom, Oz. Make those trees bloom with cherry blossoms. That would be badass. You guys know I'm all about cherry blossoms. I love cherry blossoms. It's my time of year for sure. Uh, it is Wednesday, so you know what that means. Happy Silly Wednesday. Get your Joey's coffee. I got some Joey's coffee this week, and oh, I've been loving it. <laughs> loving it. There's nothing better in your cup than Joey's coffee. And I try to get as many people addicted to it as possible. I'm like, here, you got to try this. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, that's the best the best ever hey if you want to <clears throat> Popeye I'm sorry nose rings gross you out I think I've seen you say that like five times in the chat today <laughs> I had a nose ring for many years so you know I did I wore a diamond right here and then one day I my car broke down on the side of the road and I had to fix something I don't know who knows and I slammed the hood down and my nail caught it and ripped it right out of my nose and shot that diamond and I just was like, by that time, my kids were in school. They weren't little anymore. And it, I was like, well, I want to be respectable. So I took it out. But I had a nose ring for many years. Uh, there is my donation links if you want to help me out. Of course, I think they are in the description box below. My Venmo, my Cash App, my Chime. I've been watching. You guys know I've been watching Riverdale. And I'm loving it. It's great. And I think obviously Chime bought a, an advertising spot on that show because like they'll be right in the middle of a conversation and they'll be like, oh, let me pay with that for that with my Chime card. <laughs> they hold it up like it's so cheesy. It's so funny. But I like Chime. Chime has I, I you know, at the end of the day, they're all big banks. But Chime has been the best uh, access for poor people. I will tell you that. Best access with the lowest fees for the trailer park is what I get from Chime. Anyways, there is my PayPal. I wish Chime paid me, right? I wish. I wish they did, but they don't. Okay. I have got the best outgoing closer I have came across in a long freaking time. It made me cry. When I watched it this morning on the playback, I was just bawling. I was like, oh my God, this song is so powerful. I love it. I have been a fan of, of corn for a while. I mean, I don't like everything they do. And then personally, as human beings, yeah, kind of douchey, but I love their music. And Coming Undone has been one of my favorite go-tos for many years when I'm feeling frustrated and, you know, so I found this amazing female slowed down version of it. I think you guys are just going to love this version. It is so amazing. Okay, so I'm going to get out of here. Make sure you guys join me tomorrow, 10 a.m. Uncensored. No YouTube. Make sure you go to one of the other channels. And uh, thank you guys so much for being patient and holding on as we go through all of our tech issues. And uh, we will get it worked out. I will. My, my new studio is great. I love the bells and whistles. I can literally hit a button. My camera's there. My camera's out. Oz has done awesome at helping me out. We just got to get it to launch to the right place on my YouTube. The problem this morning is, is it keeps launching to just the live part. It's not going to the scheduled event. So you guys are sitting in the scheduled event and it's going somewhere else. So I got to get those two to go to the right place and then we'll be in the new studio and hopefully we won't have as many issues. So, okay. You guys have a great rest of your day. I'm out of here, but remember you are always welcome at the trailer park and I, I will see you tomorrow. Come on. Keep holding on when my brain's ticking like a bomb. Guess the black thoughts have come again to get me. And sweet bit of words and like nothing. I've heard sing along, mockingbird. You don't affect me. That's right. Deliver it to my heart. Please strive. Be deliberate. Well, coming undone i ray i'm coming undone to lay i'm coming undone what looks so strong so delicate way i'm starting to suffocate and soon i anticipate i'm coming undone what looks so strong so delicate Choke, choke again I thought the demons were my friends Getting me in and they were out to get me And since I was young I've tasted sorrow on my tongue And the 
does not protect me. That's right. Trigger between my eyes. Please strike. Make it quick now. Wait, I'm coming undone. I read. I'm coming undone to lay. I'm coming undone. Oh, what looks so strong, so delicate? Wait, I'm starting to suffocate, and soon I anticipate. I'm coming undone. Oh, what looks so strong, so delicate? I'm trying to hold it together. Head is lighter than a feather. Looks like I'm not getting better, not getting better, not getting better. Wait, I'm coming undone. I rain. I'm coming undone too late. I'm coming undone. Oh, Delicate.